Hey guys, it's Charles from Tech Always, and over 12 years ago, Intel launched their first Core 2 quad processors, and they were really high-end at the time, costing over $500. But up until last year, Intel was still only selling quad-core processors to the mainstream, and that kind of begs the question, 12 years later, is the Core 2 quad still viable? Well, today we're going to find out if you can still game on a Core 2 quad in 2019. So let's get right into it. Okay, so you guys might be wondering how I'm gonna get these benchmarks. So right next to me here, I have an Intel LGA775 motherboard along with eight gigabytes of DDR2 clocked at 800 megahertz, which is pretty slow for memory nowadays. But that was pretty, I was actually pretty fast in the DDR2 days and a Q6600 Core 2 quad processor clocked at 2.4 gigahertz. So this was the first Core 2 quad processor and it's gonna be a really good bench to show how they perform nowadays. And I'm also gonna plop my GTX 1070 for my main rig into this board when I'm testing. And then I'm gonna compare the numbers against my 4790K overclocked 4.6 gigahertz system back there with the T GTX 1070 as well to show what kind of bottleneck you're getting with the Core 2 Quad along with if the gameplay is even playable. So without other way, let's go set this up and check out some benchmarks. Okay, so I was just setting up the Core 2 Quad system and I realized I don't have any extra drives. So I'm gonna have to take an SSD out of my main rig and actually put it into that system. So what I'm gonna do is take this inland SSD um, out of my main system and when I take out my 1070 right there and I'm gonna use that as the Windows drive and boot drive and game drive and everything for the Core 2 Quad system because I just don't really have any other option here because I thought I had an extra SSD, but I forgot to get it. So that's my little update. Let's get back to that. Okay, so the benchmarks are finally done. Before we get into them though, let's do a, one more quick rundown of the specs and the systems. They both are rocking EVGA GTX 1070 super clocked, and then the Core 2 quad system was a Q6600 at stock frequencies, which is 2.4 gigahertz, and eight gigabytes of 800 megahertz DDR2, and the high-end system, which is my main rig, to show the potential bottleneck that it's um, posing, is a 4790K at 4.6 gigahertz, with 16 gigabytes of 1866 megahertz DDR3. So those are the two systems. Now let's take a look at the benchmarks, starting off with Fortnite. Okay, so starting off the benchmarks, we have Fortnite, and this isn't a great start for the Core 2 Quad, as the performance here is extremely stuttery, as you can tell by the frame time graph. It's really going up and down, so the performance definitely is not consistent. And when you compare it to the 4790K, you can see just how much of a bottleneck the Core 2 Quad is as the, the average FPS is less than one fifth of the i7s. So this means that the Core 2 Quad is really holding back the 1070 and even in the 1% and 0.1% lows, you can see they're both just one FPS. So this is extremely low and just shows the horrible performance that the Core 2 Quad is delivering in Fortnite. And keep in mind, this is at the lowest settings at 1080p. So you would kind of expect it to perform a little bit better. And adding on to the poor performance, when you first landed, all, none of the buildings would be loaded in. You wouldn't be able to enter them and you'd just be left floating along, doing absolutely nothing, making the gameplay even worse. And you would also miss out on the entire lobby. You would generally finish loading in the game. Even though this was on an SSD, you would generally finish loading the game when the battle bus was already partway across the island. So it just really made out for a bad experience. Let's move on to the next game, CSGO. Okay, so CSGO, it's a slightly better story, but it's still not amazing as the performance still isn't super consistent but the average FPS is a little bit higher. And when you compare it to the 4790K, you're still getting a massive deficit with about, again, one fifth of the average FPS, but the 1% and 0.1% lows aren't nearly as bad. And while I wouldn't say it's a fantastic experience, it was more playable than Fortnite. And as long as you're just messing around and not trying to be fantastic at the game, I'd say this is semi-playable. Um, but now let's move on to the next game, Rocket League. 
So Rocket League was one of the few games that I found to be playable with the Core 2 Quad actually, as the FPS was pretty consistent overall um, without too many dips, and this can also be seen in the frame times. And then when you compare these results to the 4790K, well again, it does show a huge bottleneck with the Core 2 Quad. It's not nearly as big with the average being about half of the i7, while the other games, the Core 2 Quad was offering about one fifth of the performance. And the average is also 90 FPS, which is still pretty high and a good amount over 60 FPS. So you're getting a pretty smooth experience. So I would definitely say Rocket League was playable on the Core 2 Quad. Uh, but now let's move on to some more demanding games like GTA 5. So GTA 5 actually really surprised me with the Core 2 Quad and it was actually one of the best experiences I had playing with it. So the frame times were pretty consistent. They weren't as smooth as Rocket League, but it was still a good experience. And the average FPS was 53. And then when you compare it to the 4790K, it still was about one third of the 4790K's average, but it wasn't horrible. And the gameplay was actually pretty smooth. And I find that smooth gameplay is more important than high FPS. So while GTA might not have been as optimized in the past, it's definitely really upped its game. As now, even at the lowest settings, it's performing above Fortnite, which is known to be pretty easy to run. And considering that this was one of the best experiences I had gaming on the Core 2 Quad, I was definitely surprised. And being that GTA is such a casual game, I would definitely have no problem playing on a Core 2 Quad system as it delivered a pretty smooth experience and it wasn't too stuttery or anything. So yeah, I was definitely impressed with that. Now let's move on to the next game, PUBG. So PUBG delivers a similar experience to Fortnite and CSGO except even worse. This gameplay is low FPS, very stuttery, and just not a fun experience overall. And when you compare it to the i7, it's similar to those other games as well, as it's getting about one fifth of the performance as the i7 average. And the 1% and 0.1% lows are extremely low. And the 0.1% lows are actually higher on the Core 2 Quad than the i7, but I think this just comes down to error margins, um, as the i7's performance was much smoother and I would definitely prefer to play the i7 as you were scoring 120 FPS average, which was very playable and it was pretty consistent except for maybe a dip or two, but the Core 2 Quad really just couldn't hold its own, delivering only 23 FPS and, that's, and it was extremely stuttery for most of the time. So that with a GTX 1070 just really isn't acceptable. And now we're gonna move into the final game, the most recent game actually, Insurgency 2. So Insurgency 2 is the sequel to the extremely popular game Insurgency and Insurgency 2 was just released this month, December of 2018, so it's pretty recent and it really shows how the Core 2 Quad just doesn't hold up against modern games. So the FPS was extremely low, even on the lowest settings, scoring only 25 average and it, this was pretty stuttery as well. So when you compare it to the i7, you're getting less than one fifth of the performance and as you can see in the 0.1 and 1% lows, those got down extremely low, dropping down to nine and six FPS respectively. So that is extremely low and the gameplay was just horrible. It was basically unplayable. You couldn't really do anything and it didn't look very good as well. Okay, so those are the results and they weren't really anything impressive. And actually they were pretty disappointing. I would have loved to have seen the Core 2 Quad really hold its own a little more in those games. If it could hold its own, it would have been a nice option for a budget gamer, but I feel like it just can't really hold up in these modern titles. Back in 2017, when I did my $100 build featuring a Q6600 in the $100 build competition with CompTV and the Toasty Bros, the Core 2 Quad really could kind of hold its own. But in the past two years, it seems like games have gotten more demanding and the Core 2 Quad just couldn't really hold up. It's extremely stuttering in these modern titles and it just isn't a fantastic option anymore. Back then, while it wasn't performing great, it was cheap and offered decent performance, but now I'd say it's pretty dead. In the six games I tested, four of them were essentially unplayable, but GTA 5 being okay and Rocket League being the only like pretty great performer. And these were in ideal situations with GTX 970. If you're buying a Core 2 Quad, I'm gonna assume you don't have something anywhere near that tier performance, so the performance that you're getting with whatever graphics card you do have would probably be even lower than that, which just isn't ideal for gaming. So I think I'm gonna have to declare the Core 2 Quad dead. In 2019, this thing just cannot hold up and there isn't really any reason to build a budget PC with a Core 2 Quad if you're gonna be gaming. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like. Let me know if you wanna see more videos like this where I look at older hardware and give a kind of modern take on it. If you do, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. 
and thanks for watching. Bye.